Hey there folks, welcome to my Retro Media Room. Today I wanted to take a look at five PlayStation 2 games that to this day in 2024 are still exclusive to PS2. Outside of emulation or backwards compatible PS3s, which are hard to find, the only way you're playing these is on an original PlayStation 2. If you like content like this, please subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell to keep up with my videos, like the video to help me with the algorithm, share it with your friends if you, if you have friends that like gaming or you want to show them these games so they get exposed to them and want to check them out. And with that, we'll get started with Onimusha 2 Samurai's Destiny. So for those wondering or don't know, I'm not starting with the first Onimusha because that game actually has modern re-releases on current consoles. So if you want to check that game out, it's a very good game. I, I highly recommend you check it out. As per usual from the time, the game starts off with a full motion video cinematic intro. While impressive, it does a good job of telling the stories of the characters at least to get you started. It's not as impressive as the first game's intro. The first game's intro was an absolute masterpiece and technical marvel. One thing I have to mention that's a little bit strange in the game is that they actually used the likeness of the late actor Yusaku Matsuda, who passed away in 1989. So to resurrect the likeness of a passed away actor for the main protagonist, who's Jubei, I found that a little bit strange. It was criticized at the time, and I can understand why. The graphics in this game are absolutely stunning. I actually hadn't seen them in a while and forgot how stunning they are, and I was just blown away revisiting this. Just like Resident Evil, this game consists of pre-rendered backgrounds, 3D objects and characters, fixed camera angles, and tank controls. So you're going to hear a lot of comparisons to Resident Evil here, which for pretty much forever, people have usually referred to Onimusha as Resident Evil with Samurai. While it might have tank controls like Resident Evil and kind of an auto-aim system like Resident Evil, when it comes to the actual core of the combat, it is quite a bit different. It's, it's a hack and slash. You can block. You can counterattack if you time your attacks just right. You can use magic attacks with your magic swords, and there are several throughout the game and other weapons. While the first game has solid combat as well, this one took it even further with uh, more evolving magic attacks, more weapons, more abilities, and so on. So it has light RPG elements to it, the way you level up your weapons and your armor, which is a nice addition to this. In the first Onimusha, you were able to play as your companion, and it gave it a little bit of variety. In this one, they take it further. There's additional characters you get to play to kind of change up the gameplay and mechanics, your combat a little bit. So there's variety here. At the end of the day, Onimusha 2 is Onimusha 1 on steroids. Almost everything about the first one, they improved upon and expanded on and added more and made it even better. And un also, unlike the first one, this has a new game plus mode, which really helps with the replayability and makes it where the second and third time you play this game, it only gets better and better. But one gripe I have is the gift system. So in order to get rare items that you're seeking in order to complete the game or get the best items possible, it's annoying because it's it seems to be random what you get and trying to get particular items to, to get like every major item in the game is a pain. So that is one gripe I have. But other than that, it is still a blast to play. It's a blast to restart, do New Game Plus with, hack and slash the demons and, and the samurai. It's really, really cool stuff. It's gorgeous, great atmosphere, through and through, fantastic game. I can't recommend it enough. It's too bad that this hasn't had a modern re-release yet. Like, but, but since the first one had a re-release, that does give me and others hope that they'll continue re-releasing Onimusha so that all of us can uh, either play for the first time or revisit again. Next, we have Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex. This is a bit of a hidden gem on the PS2. Always really like this game. You don't really hear it talked about a whole lot. The Ghost in the Shell that people usually refer to as Ghost in the Shell on the PlayStation 1, but I think this is a better game. The graphics here are really impressive for the PS2 with big environments, really cool animations, very stylized combat. I love the acrobatics of your character, how you're able to flip around and jump around to move around in combat and jumping and skipping off of walls and figuring out the environments. The guns and the gunplay feel really nice, and they have a lot of impact to them when you shoot enemies. The game's not perfect. It's slightly rough around the edges at certain times, but overall really well worth it. This is a nice hidden gem that if you've never, whether you're a fan of the anime or you've never heard of the anime, it's a pretty cool story with stylized cinematics, interesting characters, and there's also a cool feature where you can hack your enemies and you take complete control over them, say a sniper on one post to take out the other sniper and then take out additional enemies. So there's different combat puzzles like that. And I would argue that this is a graphical showcase for the PlayStation 2 with an engine built from the ground up on PS2. Very, very interesting. 
this is a unique title that not enough people really talk about. And if you're a stand, if you're a Ghost in the Shell standalone complex fan or just Ghost in the Shell in general, this is an interesting title to check out. I mean, I, I've always been impressed by it and liked it. It just seems like, yeah, not enough people talk about it or appreciate it. I mean, it's a solid game. Next up, we have Virtual Fighter 4 Evolution. So this is actually the re-release of Virtual Fighter 4 on PS2. They added the Evolution title and it was released it as a greatest hits for $20. This is when I eventually got a hold of it. And I'm glad I did because this is the superior release of it. It has a lot of additional content, such as a version of the game that makes it look and play like the original. That's in the extra features. There's AI representations of real-life tournament players that they have coded into the games. It's, it's kind of like the Soul Edge mode on Soul Blade where you can kind of earn outfits and earn money and you rank up and you so it's like offline tournaments you can do within the game it's very cool it's a way to kind of exp- have the arcade experience a little bit but uh, just against ai but at the end of the day it's the gorgeous graphics 60 fps beautiful animation fighting mechanics of virtual fighter i in my opinion this is the greatest virtual fighter ever made as much as i love the original i love too I think this is an absolutely fantastic Virtual Fighter. I think it's better than Virtual Fighter 5 and all the way up to today. It's So that's why it saddens me that this is still the only way you can play it is on a PlayStation 2. Because this game is phenomenal and it needs to be brought back to light on modern consoles. So we can, because it was just such a lightning in a bottle, I would say, for Virtual Fighter. To me, the fighting mechanics look and feel so good. It's almost at times like it's choreographed. It, it looks and feels so good in the, in the fighting that, that, that's, and that's rarely achieved in fighting games where it doesn't look like, Oh, it's a fighting game. It's stilted. It's, you know, just player inputs. It actually looks almost choreographed in a way. That's how well they put this game together and the mechanics of it. So I love this game. It's one of my favorite fighting. Th- it's one of my favorite 3D fighting games of all time. Obviously, I mean, like I said, I love the first two, like the second one on. Sega Saturn, and I grew up with the 32X version of Virtual Fighter 1. But next to those, I absolutely adore this, this game. It's still fun to play today. And here we have Transformers from Atari on PS2. This game came out of nowhere when it came out. Nobody expected it to be anything special. It was like, oh, another Transformers is probably going to be another mediocre license title. No, this is a shockingly good game. Right off the bat, you get access to several Autobots, including Optimus Prime. Now, you don't have access to them at the very beginning of the game, but as you progress to the game and you explore, and that's the thing, this encourages you to explore every map and to find every item because you find these mini bots that are basically add-ons to your Autobot where you you can have up to three or four weapons and attachments and abilities, and then you can mix and match, and they give each other bonuses to suit whatever style you want. You can customize it in combination however you want and make it where you got more lasers or rocket launchers or grenade launchers or big, more shields or more power. Like there's all these things, these all these endless combinations you can do to make your Autobot perform the way you want to as a player. So it's creative, it's ambitious, it's fun. Very, very cool. The graphics are phenomenal in this game. While, yeah, pretty blurry. Yes, frame rate's not that great, but it's because it's very ambitious. There's a lot going on. These environments are massive and they're fun to explore. You feel compelled to explore to find all the mini bots so you can customize your Autobots. The combat is a lot of fun. Very, very cool. Very creative. Uh, You have melee attacks, ranged attacks. You can, of course, transform into your vehicle, ride around on the fly. I mean, this game is just something else. This blew my socks off when I first played it. I would argue it's probably the best Transformers game ever made. Kind of a hidden gem at this point because I don't really hear anybody talking about it very much. And if, especially if you're a Transformers fan, you're like, man, I want a Transformers experience that actually you know, gives justice to the Transformers brand. This is one of the few. And I've always loved this game. And man, imagine seeing this with the modern release where the, with the resolution and frame rate cleaned up. This would be a phenomenal experience on modern tech. But for now, it's a fantastic game to play on PS2. Our fifth and final game here is Rad Robot Alchemic Drive. So I've always been a fan of this game, but for many years, I did not realize that this is the same developers as the Earth Defense Force franchise from Sandlot. So when you're familiar with Defense Force, you sit here and play Rad, you can easily see the DNA going on here, and even some sound effects are the same. This is a rough around the edges, but wholly unique game. If you love anime and you love anime-centric stuff, you're going to really dig this. But aside from that, the mechanics of the game are so epic and unique. I absolutely love it. 
the the bread and butter of the game is you control a giant mech from the third person from afar. I mean, technically, you can fly on top of your mech and stand on it and do it, but that's kind of tough to do because you fall off and stuff. But in terms of the core mechanics of the game, you're off to the side, whether it be on top of a building. You're basically on a perch where you get a perspective of where you can see your gear clearly. You can see the combat clearly because you got big monsters against your mech and you use all four of your top buttons, you know, L1, R1, R2, L2, to step forward, step back, left foot, right foot, right punch, left punch, hooks, uppercuts, special attacks. You do all these different things with complex controls, but it's not to where it's like cumbersome or annoying. It's actually really fun and satisfying when you land a punch or you land a special attack. It's big and epic and explosive and you know, it's obviously, I mean, with Sandlot, the guys who did EDF, it's, it's going to be a little cheesy. It's a little bit campy. That's kind of the point. But the epicness of the scale and how fun it is and how unique it is, I love this game. I'm so glad I managed to keep it over the years. I'm glad I discovered it many years ago. I rented it one day. So this is what I played many years before I ever touched EDF, not realizing they were connected. So yeah, Robot Alchemic Drive, very very cool and unique PS2 game. I love Sandlot. I love what they. I love what these guys do with Japanese games and these these Japanese developers. And uh, I'm looking forward to EDF six in terms of their latest work. And if you love EDF and you want to kind of play something that's kind of you know some of their older work that has DNA of EDF on it, check out Robot Alchemic Drive. So yeah, that was my five PlayStation two games that are still exclusive to PlayStation two to this day. If you like the video and you watch it to this point, please subscribe and like the video. Share it with your friends, especially if you other people that collect or you want to show them these games that maybe you're familiar with it, but they're not showing the video. They'll get a taste of it. Maybe they'll be interested in trying to find them. I just want to spread the love of nostalgia and old school gaming. So, all right. Thanks again for watching and have a blessed day.